Okay, now the first thing I'm going to want to do is get my picture laid out. So I'll just do a quick sketch and uh, I'll use paint to do that sketch, not a pencil. Uh, I'll just water this down a lot. So I'm taking my phthalo blue, I'll just put a little dot right here and add water to my brush. I'll be constantly, you know, this towel is down here on the table and I'll be constantly putting my brush in the water and then just dragging it across my towel to keep it wet but not dripping. I'll put the left side of my wave taller than the right side. And of course what that means is that the right side is further away. So I've got a wave that's going to be drifting in a little bit to the right. So you know it's, it kind of goes up, down. This will be breaking more in some spots, less than others. Every time you cut a triangle in half, so let's say there's an object here. Well if I cut this triangle in half, every time you go halfway to the horizon, you are at double the distance that you were here. And that rule of halves and doubles is just that when you go twice the distance, you're at half the size. When you go half the distance, you're at twice the size. If I have kind of a zigzag line like this, because I don't want to make just a geometric perfect wave. As an artist, you kind of like to make things look organic and flowing. So you might choose to not make a perfectly level surface. But I think one thing that is overlooked is just how much distance that change in height represents. See this curve I made crosses all the way from the 80 to the 160 and that's suggesting that this point is an entire 80 feet closer than the high point. And so naturally that's going to make the perspective look weird in this picture. That wave is not going to look like it's rising out of that level ish surface of water. The curves can be good, but very subtle. So for the most part, I'm just using level lines because this far out, a tiny bit of change represents a lot of distance. So ever so slightly, I raise the right side higher than the left side. But for the most part, this is a level line at the base of the wave. Now I'll come down here and my stroke is like a smile shape. My pressure increases at the middle of the stroke. Here's one stroke, just like this. That's the shape that you want to be able to reproduce with every single stroke. That takes a lot of practice, but don't be discouraged. Just be diligent and know that with time, your hand gets very familiar with that motion. My next stroke, I'm going to try to rest right on top of one of the ends of this stroke. So right here, you can see it cutting right across the end of that. I don't want to make an X and crisscross it. The next one I'll put over here. And you can see that that one comes right across this point. It's kind of 80% dry, but there's a little bit of tacky paint on there. Sometimes you can just drag the uh, somewhat dry brush across that and it'll make the whole picture look softer by blending that little bit of wet surface that's still on there. Anytime I feel like the paint is drying and pulling and leaving texture that I don't want, I just gotta stop, wet my brush, and start again. It's just kind of an instinctive reaction as the artist to fight it. When the brush stops doing what you want to do, you kind of manipulate the brush and turn around. <laughs> you, got, you got to stop. <laughs> stop, rinse the brush, start again. White, black, and blue mix at the base of this wave, just like I've been doing. It just has a lot more blue. Now I want to be careful to keep my line. It's okay right now if I don't have a nice smooth blend into all those little waves I've painted. I just want to keep my line so that I don't lose track of where my wave is. I'll keep doing this, see this brush stroke is down and over. That's what I'm doing primarily. Here I'm just cleaning it out. Here, just wipe it on it down. Down and over, uh, because that's, that's the direction that my, my curves were. So in order to just keep the look of the wave curling to the right, I'm just putting my brush strokes in the same direction. So I'll take a little bit of this green and start mixing that with the white up at the top of this wave. So I have this nice turquoise color. And this is where I think it really helps to, to keep the brush strokes in that direction that the wave is curling. I'm keeping the angle of the brush square, you know, down and over without, I'm not swooping my wrist like this. So the line kind of changes width. It gets skinnier as I slide over to the right because the brush is turned more sideways. So I'm going to do skinny strokes. I'm not doing that smile shape anymore. 
it really helps the sea foam to not look like the reflection because the strokes are a different shape. If I do the same shape, it's, it's just going to disappear into the reflection. So I'm just doing these horizontal little strokes, but being careful not to make the little smile shapes because then it's just going to disappear into the reflection and I won't, I won't have that feel of, of the foam breaking apart on top of the water being a separate layer. Now when foam breaks apart, it, it, it's similar to the water where it, it pulls apart and leaves strands, skinnier strands in between. And the bubbles come up from the water leaving kind of ovalish patches of water in between the foam. So, so you have these shapes that where the negative space leaves these ovals. And, and, and they're not just perfect ovals, you know, they just are these blobby shapes with skinny strands of foam separating them. But in perspective, it's all going to be flattened way out. And I can come back with that watercolor and add it in between. So right now, I'm really just making skinny horizontal lines. So I'll start with this left side of this wave curling over. And so I'm thinking, I'm, I'm just going to put my white water, I'm, I'm going to move my brush in the way that I want it to look like the white water is coming over because that that might help me to just establish maybe accidentally make shapes that that actually look like water tumbling over so that's a higher part I'll, I'll keep it higher and maybe make it just just curling over a little bit in here I don't want to make it real level I want higher and lower spots on this wave so I'll put this paint right in here uh, and, and this is just real thin. It'll probably dry on me before I can work it, but I'm just getting it in place at the moment. There's a cool thing that happens with waves. When it, when it curls, when it breaks enough, you'll see the inside of the top of the wave. So I'm going to paint that. I'm getting my blue and my green. And I'm just going to put a stripe right across here. Just shoo. And then I'm going to take that color and just barely grab it and pull it down right here and then I'll get another little bit of white and make the reflection on the top of that. I want to I want to make it so that you still see it. So let's see if I can actually manage that. I want to still see that dark area. There. You see, so I have the reflection bending across the top and then the dark area and then it goes to the white water in here that's shining from underneath that big curl. So now I've put the, the base of the wave tumbling over and then I'm going to put reflection of that souping out. I just wet my brush again and I'm just going to put little lines going in the direction that the wave's moving. Just like that. And you can see that I leave a little strip of that green in there. Let's get a little bit more of that color. Now that is kind of purpley looking, to be honest. That magenta might have been more extreme than I wanted. So you could go the other way and just use the black. A little kind of a zigzag shape like this. And where it's going along the face of the wave, I'll widen it out. It's getting stretched this way. So I'll make that part fatter. But notice that I left the vertical areas skinnier. Now if I make another little spot that's pointing to this, then it looks like it got pulled apart. And you can just memorize these shapes and reuse them over and over. Now instead of painting the skinny little strands, I'll paint the space in between just like I did with the foreground. So I need that turquoise color. Let me get my phthalo green out. Okay, so we got green and blue, and then I'll put some white in it. Okay, now I'm just making little oval shapes, and I'm gonna make those little shapes touch each other, connect, you know. 
and then I can control the angle I'm making those shapes. Make them go with the wave. All right, and then back to my darker, my darker colors as I get further down. So now I've mixed a darker turquoise that I'll put in here. I'm hoping that that color looks a little bit, a little bit bolder as it dries in. All right, I'm really liking the way that looks. All right, now I got to fix that wave. And I'm going to redo a little bit of the bright white splatters, or just add bright white splatters. Better get that dark turquoise color that I had on there. I'm going to do this wave too. Same technique as before, just putting more of that light color on here. Just add a little bit of bright color in the middle there. Just kind of a final highlight. I keep saying this is the last part. <laughs> it's fun. It's never finished, is it? I want to make this more exciting in here. Like it's really splashing. It just kind of looks like, you know, a piece of jelly that's just flopping over to me right now. And so I'm going to put uh, a lot more white just with a dabbing motion, just trying to get something that feels not like a brush stroke, but just feels like. Uh, well, you know, like all that splashing white water. Uh, you, you know, I find that I usually see it kind of fingering out. There will be areas to see how I've got these shapes kind of coming out. Almost like, uh, you know, tree branches or something like that. I'll put a little bit of that shadow color in here. Put that on the underside and then I'll take the white over the top of it. I just want it all to look more splashy. Here we go. Here's a brighter white color that I'll just put under this white water. Get a little water in my brush so I can make these tiny lines. Just do those same strokes and make them a little more white. This wave kind of looks like it's curling. Kind of looks like it's arching this way. It looks high in the middle so I'm just raising up the reflection a little bit on this end. I just kind of do this circular motion to do this angled reflection with my brush. Just let it touch on that side of the circle. Then I'll just use that dabbing technique to lighten it as it gets up higher on the wave. Doing a thin layer of real wet paint, real watered down paint. 